from uh, Rockland County, Spring Valley Zone, super talented. We have a very, very, very special guest. Uh oh. Big boss moves. Big. High boss level moves. executive jewels. The biggest. We have Maddie Nelson in the building. Oh, oh heads music. Oh. All woman staff, uh, her own distribution company. Um, I mean, what the? What? What, what happened? Oh, so Reggae <laughs> throwing his popping today. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. But, um, Sorry about that. Yes, we have an amazing, amazing guest. I was. Looking forward to this conversation all week. Oh, wow. Yes. When they told me last week that you were coming through, because we spoke about it episode two, mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, yeah. who you were and what you were about. And we were, we were like, I was like, man, we should get her on the show. And they were like, I don't know if we'll be able to get her. You know, she might be high priced. And the next week they're like, yo, we got her. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> What? Only cost so, me a rib, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Only cost me a rib. Just one rib. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you for uh, coming through and gracing us with for your real. presence because yes. all week I've been telling people tune in. You yes. have a high level executive coming through. Yes. Um, she's the CEO of her own label. She has yes. her own distribution company. Talk to him. She's been through all the craziness in the music industry. She done managed. She's seen yeah. everything yeah. you could think of. So I, I've, I've done that, a lot of that research. Clap that up. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta clap so that up for her, man. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I did this right. So, Maddie, how are you? How are you feeling? I hope I didn't overwhelm you um, with everything I just I'm, I'm feeling highly pressured now. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I got the Watch what come out of my mouth, cause now I feel the pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 watch your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got, we got a square dog. Oh, you feel me? You feel me? All right then, that's why you watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, thank you so much. I'm glad. I will do anything for these guys. Okay. Really, so I'm, I'm glad to be here. We yes. appreciate. We appreciate, really that, appreciate that and appreciate you. Thank for you. real. Yes. For real. So my first question to you is, when did you fall in love with music? Hmm. When I was a, a young kid, I honestly don't know how old I was, okay. mm -hmm. um, but like somewhere in the age range of like maybe eight years old to twelve, like some some in that time frame. Okay. Um, my uncle had been in the military um, and had come home, and he listened to um, music like. Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. Al Green, mm -hmm. uh -oh. um, Ohio players, yeah, classics, yeah, yeah. and Fire, right? So, like everything that had like crazy instrumentation. Yep. Yes. Um, and he smoked weed. Okay. <laughs> right? Oh, so oh, man. he used to. Oh, no, like, oh, 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 listen, put that next to him real quick. We got a reminder. We got a reminder. Yeah. Cannabis. 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 <laughs> It wasn't called cannabis back then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know it was. Yeah. But um. And so he used to use the album cover to like, you know, yeah, clean the scene out of yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Shout out to Jada. So <laughs> <laughs> I seen him doing that one day and it's the first time I saw an album cover. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was curious about both things, like what is that or what? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the only thing he would tell me about was the, the album, album cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and so then that's the first time he like put I mean of course I had heard music on the radio before, but honestly most I ever heard was gospel music on, okay. at uh, mm -hmm. choir rehearsal on Wednesday uh -huh, <laughs> and church uh -huh. on Sunday. Yes. So he actually like put something on the on the stereo like he played an album mm -hmm. and I like I kid you not and this this was Ohio Players. Okay. And I, like I know that that's the moment I fell in love with music. Okay. And so like when he saw my reaction mm -hmm. to it, then he like put me onto Al Green, and then put me onto Marvin Gaye, and okay. it just kept going. And so then I became his little student. Like okay. he loved how obsessed mm. I was. I wanted to know every instrument. Mm. I wanted to know who did what. Like who was the person like put all the sounds together? I didn't know that was called a producer. Producer. Yeah. 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 Who put all the sounds together and mm -hmm. like make it be one thing that mm -hmm. we listen. And who, who turned it into this? Like mm -hmm. how and how did this get to us? Like mm -hmm. I wanted to know everything, everything. about that process. That's dope. Yeah. So I didn't know I was in love with music, but that definitely That's where it began. Oh yeah. Oh wow, that's that's cool. What made you decide to say I wanna be in the business of music? Um, because 
it just kept growing like that it just mm. like it just became like more and more of an obsession and then uh, so when I got a little bit older I heard um, these are the breaks Oh, wow. on, on the radio mm -hmm. Game changer. that was Word. the first rap song I yeah. actually heard on the radio okay and it just like it drove me crazy so okay I'm old enough that back then you had to like bring your tape recorder to the radio and yes. try to catch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you about spoke that. about that. You know about that, yeah. Yeah. That tissue in the top. Yeah. Yes. Word. Word. So Word. I was like, I have to, I have to get this. And then I got it and then I just kept playing it until I learned it. And mm -hmm. then I was yeah. like, I want to learn something else. I want to... So so then I fell in love with rap. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was really it. Well, mm -hmm. I, actually, I fell in love with hip hop. But, um, and I, so I knew I wanted to make that I music. I want to be a part of making that kind of music. Got you. Um, Wait, so you got bars? No, I do not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> actually, oh, oh, oh. actually uh, uh, you know this is Devil Tuck Your Town Radio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know I follow you, right? Uh, so you might know, be chiming in when you be having the bars. I be hearing you with the slick bars. I be hearing uh -huh. you hitting, the, hitting them notes. Uh -huh. I be watching. I feel like, <laughs> hold on, run that, run that back. I heard a couple notes. I heard a couple notes on run oh that back. Oh my God, I wouldn't call those notes. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Never tuck your towel radio. We pull it up. Oh, man, they are pulling cards early. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah, God. So, Maddie, one thing I wanted to ask you, right? So, um, I want you to paint the picture of when you started to get into this music business. And you're moving around with a pretty big act like Black Street, and mm -hmm. you're responsible for their day to day and the management. Black Street? That's Teddy. Black Street? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to all of them, man. Shout out to all of them. Oh, 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 oh. So, so paint that picture for us. What did, what did life look like back then, and what was the day to day like for Mad Madeline Nelson? Wow. It was so, okay, back then, first of all, there, there definitely were no women managers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that talk. Yeah, we have to change the music to sound like it's about to get I think so. So we, so I got, I was still working at a Showtime at the Apollo. By the way, when I started working with Black Street, I was mm -hmm. still doing Showtime at the Apollo. Okay. Okay. Well, because we only, we tape a few times a year. I used to do only other TV shows in between. Okay. Okay. So wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold we on. Slow you, down. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> slow it down. You gotta wait, slow wait, it down. You so you did, thank you. You did, you did, you did Showtime at the Apollo. Yes. So like when people came out to rub the tree at 1 a.m., because I remember watching that. Yes. Yes. Trust me. So when people came out to rub the tree at 1 a.m., you were the one guiding them out to the stage type? Yeah, I was. I That's started crazy. there as an intern and I left there as a producer. Talk about it. Oh, no. We got to change the music. That's wow. Wow. She yeah. gets yeah. top of the yeah. Top of yeah. Oh, and she, she has, matter of fact, I, I want to back the question up. Oh Let, let's God. start from there because that's a great <laughs> story too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so tell me about Apollo. Um, I went as an intern mm -hmm. and... Um, I met the executive producer when I was interning in the wardrobe department, okay. which really was like the most shit job. Oh! oh. 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 You know what we about the music? Oh. Soon as Friday in a couple of years. We get fired up. That's all good. We'll speak about your donation off record. Right <laughs> <laughs> not on camera, not on camera. Not on camera. It was, uh, it was not the most glamorous job at the show. Uh -huh. Um. So the executive producer, I had never met, I didn't know how he looked like, I knew nothing, was in the, in, came in the wardrobe room one day, I was calling around on the floor looking for buttons or something, mm -hmm. and I like, came across this person's shoe, <laughs> and I looked up, it's like somebody standing above me, I stand up, I shake his hand, and he's like, oh, that's a firm handshake, who are you? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm the person that's going to be the executive producer of this show one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's nice. Oh, really? oh, I guess Gladiator was right. <laughs> <laughs> was like... How soon? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, probably soon. Mm -hmm. um, mind you, I'm an intern. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a clue I'm talking to the executive producer. The oh, next wow. <laughs> Talk about his job, bro. No? Talk about yeah. And you I'm are, like, I'm here to take your job. So exactly. <laughs> wow. And um, the next day, I was told that I was going to be a PA. Oh. That, that the executive producer mm -hmm. that I cool. met had said I was going to be a PA. And I'm like, but I didn't meet the executive producer. I still <laughs> have no clue who this man was. was. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know what a PA was either. Mm -hmm. I just knew it must be something better than calling around for buttons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so I started as, as a production assistant and I literally was tasked with getting donuts and coffee. Uh, and ooh. I remember 
maybe like on day one on the first day mm -hmm. i was like this is not for me this is not my this is not what i signed up for mm -hmm. i was doing more as an intern mm -hmm. um and there was this woman who ended up uh being my boss for the entire time that i was there actually um and she said to me if you don't <clears throat> get the coffee and donuts the people that you're going to get the coffee and donuts for would have to go get their own coffee and donuts and then they wouldn't be able to get their job done and then she showed me this entire trajectory mm -hmm. of like what wouldn't get done if there wasn't somebody to get getting through. the coffee and donuts oh, wow. mm -hmm. that taught me to never underestimate even the lowest job mm -hmm. that, okay. that someone has to do in an organization like yes. it really it really taught me that it was the point i had to go i was picking up dry cleaning every certain day of the week mm -hmm. for the executive producer and the, the 